In this video, we'll summarize uh, what we've done in the past few videos, looking at the fine structure of hydrogen as coming from contributions from perturbative terms or corrective terms to the original Hamiltonian of the hydrogen atom. So what we found then is from this uh, original Hamiltonian, which only took into account the Coulomb interaction between the proton and the electron in hydrogen. We also had to add a number of corrections. The first one was the uh, relativistic correction to the kinetic energy term. Due to the fact that while the hydrogen atom is very close to being non-relativistic, uh, relativistic effects still have enough of an effect to have this uh, qualitative discrepancy of not having the degeneracy being quite as high as we would have initially thought. This was correction to kinetic energy. And this is for all states. So any N, any L, any ML, uh, this correction applies to all states of the hydrogen atom. We also found that we had neglected an interaction between the spin of the electron and its orbital angular momentum. And that was captured by this spin orbit coupling correction. And this one, strictly speaking, applies to states that have angular momentum. We also presented another correction to the, so this is for potential energy, correction to the potential energy. We also presented a correction, a second correction to the potential energy. And this was for L equals zero states. So states with no orbital angular momentum. So what we have then is a Hamiltonian that is our original Coulomb uh, potential Hamiltonian plus uh, contributions from each one of these corrections. This meant that our new energy spectrum added contributions to the unperturbed energy spectrum of hydrogen. There was a relativistic first order correction a first order correction due to the spin orbit coupling and a first order correction due to the Darwin term. So this is for all states, for states with angular momentum and for states with no angular momentum. And strictly speaking, we should add up each other each of these contributions to get our final energy spectrum with fine structure. However, it turns out that even though this correction shouldn't be applied to L equals zero states for physical grounds, under physical grounds, if you, uh, instead of just setting L equals to zero, you take the limit, L tends to zero, this term will actually coincide with this term over here. It'll give the exact same numerical value to the energy correction for L equals zero states. 
So even though technically speaking is incorrect, uh, we actually don't need to consider the contributions of this extra term. It's nice to know it for physical reasons, but we're only going to add contributions from these two corrections. And Okay, so because of this, we really only need EN is EN zero plus relativistic correction plus spin orbit coupling correction. And this will write as fine structure corrections. The fine structure corrections can be massaged into the following form. So rather than having the orbital angular momentum, the fine structure is actually only a function of the principal quantum number and of the total angular momentum. And to, to see this, uh, the reason is because for uh, a fixed L, J can only take on values L plus one half or L minus one half, where this one half comes from the contribution of the spin of the electron. So, Ultimately, we get that the energy spectrum of the hydrogen atom with fine structure, putting all of this together, is our original unperturbed energy spectrum plus fine structure constant squared n squared J plus one half N minus three quarters. Okay, and this is our final energy spectrum of hydrogen with the fine structure accounted for. And this uh, remedies the discrepancies, both qualitative and quantitative that were presented uh, in a previous video. So now, some of the degeneracy is lifted and the energy levels in generally are lower than was predicted by the unperturbed energy levels.